my god! <laughs> oh, what a relief. Yes! <laughs> oh, my lovely. Well, you join me here at Pump House Lake on a very mild October morning. Um, it's the first time that I've been here and yeah, I'm really excited uh, to be at this venue. Fortunately, we was invited over here for filming purposes as this is an embryo syndicate water. Yeah, like anywhere, you know, it's always exciting to fish somewhere that you've never been before. So I arrived here yesterday evening before the cameras arrived just to get my bearings with the place. You know, I was tipped off that this reed mark swim was a good swim to be in. It's a consistent swim throughout the year and uh, yet yeah, the swim was available and not long after standing in here yesterday evening, about an hour before dark, there were some fish showing around by the sunken pump house or straight out in front of the swim. You can sort of just, just see the roof of it above the water surface. You know, I think generally Pump House is a shallow lake, so I found a bit of a deeper depression out there. And yeah, the bottom felt okay, nice and smooth. Um, so just decided to put all three rods on that area for the night. Getting rods in out into dark, uh, fishing at about 18 wraps. Tried to get all my rods as concentrated as I could. So I put a wafter on the middle rod, and then on the two outside rods, I fished small pop-ups and then put out a fair bit of bait last night, maybe a couple of kilo, two, three kilo of chopped boily, boily crumb and some pellet. And around midnight, I had a bite off the right hand rod. That was a small common, probably around 12 pounds. I slipped him back. And then just before first light, the left hand rod went with a 22 pound mirror. And about an hour or so ago, I had another bite on the left hand rod and that was an a common of around 18 pounds. So, you know, for your first night on a new lake, free fish, um, I'll take that. And I know there's bigger fish in here. There's a good head of 30s. So hopefully, over the course of the next couple of days, we'll get into some of these better fish. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm gonna sit on my hands for a little bit and then freshen things up and redo the rods and I'll run you through things a bit more then. Oh, one's just topped at the back of the spot. <laughs> you see them bubbles at the back there? See the... Literally, head just slid out. Like it, gets, it gets shallower, so I've put like quite long... don't often fish lead core these days, but I have put long leaders on just to protect my line because um, it feels quite savage in places, the bar. But yeah, that's what we're dealing with. There's quite a bit of shit out there, so maybe that is why the pop-ups were the better option. Okay, so I've just brought all three rods in. Nothing's happened since that last fish, which was probably about three hours ago. Now, I did decide not to rebait after that fish to see if I could get a quicker bite, because initially I was baiting up, topping up with another four or five spawns after each fish but it was taking a few hours in between bites. So like I just said, I just wanted to see if it would increase my chance of a quicker bite by not rebaiting, uh, but that hasn't worked. So I wanted to bring all three rods in, freshen things up. Um, on close inspection, the, the rig with the wafter on, that did have quite a bit of debris around it. And that's probably the reason why it didn't go because perhaps it wasn't you know, presented quite right. So I'm gonna stick with the pop-ups because that's what's working. I'm gonna fish just two rods on the pop-ups and then put another rod, maybe longer and left, sort of tighter to that reed line uh, along that back margin because I have seen a couple of fish show tighter this morning. Now, last night, I did put my bait out with the spawn from the swim, but because I can get round that back bank, I've decided that I'm gonna put the marker rod out from the swim and I'm gonna head round there and see if I can just throw my bait in around the marker um, I am fishing over crumb and pellet, so I'm going to see if I can mix some water and um, 
mix some water into the bait and see if I can ball it up and see if, see if I can just chuck it out onto the spot. If I can, then that's what I prefer to do because it's gonna be a lot more discreet putting the bait out than having to spom it. If not, then I'll just continue spomming and, and doing what I was doing anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna flick the mark rod out and head round there and see if we can get some bait, bait round the float too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've just had a couple of attempts to ball out the bait onto the float, but the, uh, the marker float is a little bit out of reach. I'm having to throw the bait quite hard, and unfortunately it is breaking up in flight. And uh, yeah, it's just not going as tight as I'd like it. So I'm gonna stick to the spawning on that area and just keep two rods on it. And then I'm gonna have a bit of a lead around along this, um, along this back bank and try and fish a rod tighter to where I've seen a couple of fish show this morning. And then I'll pop back round here once I've located an area that I'm happy with. And uh, I'll definitely be able to pull some bait out because it's, you know, it's an underarm throw from here. So yeah, that's the plan. And uh, I'll pop back round here in a bit. quite a bit shallower to where I have had the bites from on the other area but given the conditions for this time of year and the fact that I've seen fish showing tight to that bank they clearly are in that shallower water so I think it's well worth giving it a go with one rod rock hard gravel. I'm going to wrap this rod up so I know the distance. I'm going to put the marker float on, cast it back out there and head back round and get some bait round the float. Okay, so that's the marker float up on the spot. It's probably around six, seven foot deep. So it is a little bit shallower to where I have been catching them from in the deeper, softer silt. Um, it's a hard, hard spot, it's, it's gravelly, it's quite stony. So I'm gonna stick with the pop-ups, but I just wanna put a single rod over there because that is where I have been seeing a couple of fish show this morning. Uh, so I'm gonna head round there now and hopefully I should be able to get some bait out easily enough around that marker float with it being tight to the bank. Then I'm going to come back round, put a rod straight on it, and I'm going to get the other two rods out, followed by a few spoms, and top up the other area. Then hopefully, there might be some action this afternoon. We will see. Right, okay, so that is the two rods clipped up for the other spot and the spawn clipped up as well. So I've just put out the first rod onto that um, tight margin area. That's gone spot on, really happy with that. I'm feeling confident of a bite hopefully this afternoon. You know, as I said, the spot is a bit shallower, but for October, I think it's probably 17, 18 degrees today. It feels so mild, the wind's hacking across into this bay as well. Seen a couple of fish there this morning, as I've mentioned. So hopefully it's just a matter of time before that rod goes. But yeah, so just got everything clipped up and ready. Um, I'm gonna knock some bait up now, get everything ready so I can just get everything out as quickly and as efficiently as possible without any sort of delays in between. And then sit back and hopefully there'll be an afternoon bite on the cards. Okay, so I'm just knocking up some bait. I'm just adding some of this dry mix into this already wet mix which was left over. I'm just gonna, oh, just gonna apply a little bit more water to the mix. Now this is just gonna add a little bit of weight 
to the crumb, get everything down a little bit quicker through the, through the layers, rather than it sort of just drifting off, I'm just putting it out dry. Just makes it into a nice sort of stodgy spod mix. All right, so I'm gonna get the rods out first and then I'm gonna follow on with the bait. Okay, so these are the two presentations which have caught me fish so far. I have caught two fish on the uh, soft coated boom spinner, which is the end trap soft. And I've caught one fish um, on the stiffer fluorocarbon. To be honest, the only reason why I'm using the fluorocarbon is because I have actually run out of uh, spinner swivels with the ring. Um, and to be honest, I wouldn't feel that confident with fishing the soft boom on a loop without a ring, just because you know I feel like maybe on the cast that loop could close and actually snarl up the swivel, which would obviously affect the uh, mechanics of the rig. So I've decided to tie one up with fluorocarbon, and obviously once you've created the loop, you know that loop's not going to close on the cast because it's because of the, uh, the the stiffness of the material. So that is the only reason for it. But in a way, it's quite nice to use um, a stiff versus a, um, a soft boom, just to see if there's any real difference and to see if one does work better than the other. Like I say, the Soft boom has done two fish and the stiff has done one fish so far, but perhaps they just prefer the yellow over the pink hook bait. Who knows, there's so many variables, but both have worked. So I'm gonna continue using these and see how they get on throughout the rest of the session. So later that morning, I decided to wind in one of the rods off the deeper area and moved it over to the far margin and within a couple of hours, Fish I'd already on. had my first yeah. bite. Yes. Was you expecting a bite that quick? Mate, that deserved a bite though, didn't it, that one? Yeah, that one. Hey. Spending a bit of time getting bait out accurately. Getting the rod out sweet. Even though it took sort of three casts or whatever, it's just worth getting it right, isn't it? So you can just feel happy leaving it. That's it. Keep away from my other lines. What have we got? Mirror by the looks of it. No, common. <laughs> Come on. That old yellow pop up. Come on, mate. Ah, that's why I thought it was a mirror, because it's got a patch on one side. Got a bit of a ball patch. <laughs> Lovely. Ah, oh, happy days. You see the patch there on his side? Well, that nice common I've just caught is resting up in the net. I think he's probably the biggest of the trip so far. Um, I'm going to get him out in a bit, but before I do, I'm going to get the rod back out. I have decided that I'm going to put the marker float back out there because I think you know, it's just better to be accurate. I'm only fishing the one rod on the spot. I just want to make sure that that rig is over the bait. Um, so it's a little bit more disturbance and extra faff, but I think in the long run, it will be worth it. And, um, and yeah, so I'm really happy that I've had a bite so quickly off that spot. You know, that's, that's two spots um, that have now produced fish. You know, two spots producing is much better than one spot. So hopefully, we can keep bouncing fish between the two areas and um, yeah, it's going to turn out to be a really good couple of nights, you know. So we'll uh, quickly get this rod back out and uh, see if we can catch another one before it gets dark. All right, last one. Feels good that. Well, it's paid off really quickly, uh, this tactic. Feels like a bit of an edge 
Uh, the coots have been diving on me quite quickly uh, after putting out the first balls. But obviously because, because it is literally just crumb and, and pellet all binded together, you know, there's always going to be bait down there. Them coots are never going to clear, clear that spot you know, as opposed to if you're putting out whole baits. So yeah, I'd say it's a pretty, pretty cool little edge, especially when you're fish, fishing the, the shallower spots, you know, where you're gonna get hammered by the birds. But uh, yeah, enough talking, so I need to get the marker float in and get the rod straight back out now. Yeah, hopefully we'll get another one out of this. Easier than spobbing too. <laughs> <laughs> 